वेल वॉट्स योर फेवरेट फूड इज इट मसाला डोसा आलू पराठा और सिंपल राइस एंड कारी और प्लेन पूरी सब्जी विच अमंग दीज फूड डू यू लाइक द मोस्ट वेल वॉट एवर फूड यू कंज्यूम राइस और वीट फॉर्म्स एन इम्पॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ योर डाइट दैट इज दीज टू आर एन इम्पॉर्टेंट इन्ग्रीडियंट ऑफ योर डेली मील नाउ फ्रॉम विच रीजियन डू वी गेट राइस एंड वीट वेल वी गेट राइस एंड वीट फ्रॉम वन सिंगल रीजन दैट इज द नॉर्दर्न प्लेन्स नाउ लेट इस लोकेट नॉर्दर्न प्लेन्स ऑन मैप ऑफ इंडिया so now this map shows the two major physical divisions of india that is the northern mountains and the northern plains now in our previous two lessons we have already discussed about northern mountains in details we know that it is a long stretch of mountain ranges consisting of several parallel chains of mountains and it is mostly present in the northernmost and in the northeastern part of our country now just below the northern mountains we have the northern plains or northern plains lie to the south of the northern mountains now the northern plains are vast region of extensive flat fertile lands and the region is drained by three major rivers namely indus ganga and brahmaputra now although river indus does not flow through the northern plains directly but some of its tributaries flow through this part of the northern plains and we will discuss about this later on so we can see that a major portion of the northern mountains is drained by the tributaries of indus and by the ganga river itself and therefore another name for northern mountains is indo gangetic plain where indo stands for river indus and gangetic stands for river ganga well apart from the indo gangetic plain northern plains are also known as the great plains of india now the northern plains of india are one of the largest plains in the world and they cover an approximate area of 2500 kilometers now the northern plains stretches from punjab in the west to assam in the east and in between it also cover other states like haryana delhi which is not a state but an important union territory of india then we have uttar pradesh bihar a small portion of jharkhand then west bengal and finally assam in the extreme east so these are the states that form a part of the indian northern plains now these northern plains are actually low lands with an elevation of not more than 200 meters above the sea level and these northern plains are formed by the alluvial deposits of three major rivers that is indus ganga and brahmaputra now let us explore more about these northern plains well the northern plains or the great plains of india are so large that they can be further divided into three smaller plains they are punjab and haryana plain this one then the ganga plain that is the middle part and finally the brahmaputra plain in the extreme east well we will discuss about each of these plains gradually the first division of the northern plains that we are going to study about is the punjab haryana plain now this punjab haryana plain is mainly drained by river indus and its tributaries there are five major tributaries of river indus they are chelam ravi satluj chenab and bias now out of these three tributaries that is ravi bias and satluj drains the 
Punjab Haryana plain. See, we can see here that not all the tributaries, but only three tributaries, that is Bias, Ravi and Satlej, drains the Punjab Haryana plain. Now, these tributaries bring huge amount of silt and alluvium and makes this plain extremely fertile. So, as mentioned just now, the huge amount of silt and alluvium carried by river Indus and its tributaries makes the Punjab Haryana plain extremely fertile and good for growing crops, especially wheat crop. And therefore, Punjab and Haryana plain can also be regarded as the wheat basket of India because of high production of wheat crop. Moving on. The second division of the northern plains is the Ganga plain. As the name suggests, the Ganga plain is drained by river Ganga and its tributaries. Now, the most important tributary of river Ganga is Yamuna. Both the rivers, that is river Yamuna and river Ganga, originates in the Himalayas and they eventually flow into the northern plains. Now, the important tributaries of Yamuna river are Chambal and Betwa and other important tributaries of Ganga are Gomati, Ghagara, Gandak, Kosi and Sun. So, all these tributaries along with the Ganga river itself flows through the Ganga valley or Ganga plain. Now, while moving over the Ganga valley, they deposit huge amount of silt and alluvium in this region, thus making the Ganga plain extremely fertile. And therefore, the Ganga plain has an extremely gentle slope. The major rivers flowing through the Ganga plain takes sharp bend thereby forming meander. Now the huge amount of silt and alluvium carried by these rivers are eventually deposited in the Ganga plain which makes it one of the most fertile regions of the world. So till now we have discussed about the two divisions of the northern plains that is the Punjab Haryana plain and the Ganga plain. The last division of northern plains that we are going to discuss about is the Brahmaputra plain and as the name suggests the Brahmaputra plain is drained by river Brahmaputra. The river Brahmaputra originates in Tibet, China and it flows eastwards. The river enters India through the state of Arunachal Pradesh and it then flows across a major part of Assam before flowing into the country of Bangladesh. Now in the state of Assam, two important tributaries of Brahmaputra river that is Tista and Manas joins it and together they then drain into the country of Bangladesh. Now, at the lower course of Brahmaputra river, river Ganga joins it. That is, river Ganga joins Brahmaputra in the country of Bangladesh before flowing into the Bay of Bengal. Now, at the confluence of river Ganga and river Brahmaputra, a new river is formed and the name of that river is river Padma. So, river Padma is formed when Ganga joins Brahmaputra at its lower course. Now before proceeding with our lesson, let us try to answer this. We will have to name the new river that is formed by the confluence of river Ganga and Brahmaputra. Well, the options given are Indus, Padma, Yamuna and Godavari. Which of them do you think is the correct one? Well, you can't remember. Let me help you out. We just read that river Padma is the name of the new river that is formed by the confluence of river Ganga and Brahmaputra in the country of Bangladesh. So the correct option is river Padma. Now at the lower course of both these rivers that is river Brahmaputra and river Ganga their speed decreases and they branch out into several distributaries. Now 
before entering into the Bay of Bengal, that is at the mouth of both these rivers, a triangular shaped plain is formed which is known as Ganga Brahmaputra Delta. Now, the Ganga Brahmaputra Delta formed at the mouth of river Ganga and river Brahmaputra is the largest delta in the world and a major portion of the Ganga Brahmaputra Delta lies in the country of Bangladesh. Now, this delta as I just mentioned is a triangular shaped alluvial plain. See, it is a triangular shaped alluvial plain and it is formed due to huge deposition of silt and alluvium at the mouth of the river before entering into a sea that is the Bay of Bengal. Now another name for Ganga Brahmaputra Delta is Sundarban. Now this Sundarban Delta or the Ganga Brahmaputra Delta is rich in biodiversity and has varied ecosystem. Let us know about it. Well, the Sundarban Delta or the Ganga Brahmaputra Delta is characterized by dense mangrove forests. That is, the Sundarban Delta has a rich population of mangroves. Now, the mangroves are not like ordinary trees, rather they are very different. Let us know about the feature of a mangrove. Well, I am sure most of you have observed that in regions of heavy rainfall where water accumulates frequently during rainy season, in such regions the houses are built on raised platforms which are known as stills. Well, this is done so in order to prevent the house from being damaged due to stagnant water and so that it remains habitable. Similarly, the mangroves that grow in coastal regions or deltaic regions have dense tangle of prop roots which looks like stilt. Well, we know that in coastal regions daily occurrence of tides are very common. Now, these dense tangle of prop roots reduces the force of tidal waves and thus they enable the trees to stand firmly on marshy ground. Now, another characteristic of mangroves is that they have breathing roots. Now, these breathing roots are respiratory roots and they come up to the surface in order to absorb oxygen from air and thus enabling the trees to breathe. So, a unique feature of mangroves is the presence of prop roots or stilt roots and breathing roots. Now, apart from the flora, the Sundarban Delta region is also rich in wildlife and some of the animals that are found in Sundarban forest are Royal Bengal Tiger which is an endangered species. Then we can also find river dolphins, dragon like crocodiles, olive ridley turtles etc. So these are some of the animals that are found in the Sundarban forest. So this brings us to the end of today's discussion on Northern Plains. We initially started our lesson with the discussion on Northern Plains. We discussed that the Northern Plains lie to the south of the Northern Mountains and they stretch from Punjab in the west to Assam in the east and the region is drained by three major rivers Indus, Ganga and Brahmaputra and their tributaries. The alluvial deposits brought down by these rivers make the northern plains extremely fertile. And then we discussed about the three major divisions of northern plains that is the Punjab Haryana plain, Ganga plain and the Brahmaputra plain. Then I also mentioned that the largest delta in the world that is the Ganga Brahmaputra delta or the Sundarban delta is also found in this region and it is a part of northern plains. And at the end, we discuss about the flora and fauna of Sundarbans. In our next lesson, we will be discussing about another physical division of India that is the Peninsular Plateau. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. 
You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubt resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now